Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at question 21 and then questions 22 to 24 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So question 21 is a quick question about voltage and resistance. So we're told that if someone comes in contact with um, a current, the risk is directly proportional to the size of the current. And we've been given some common voltages which are used around the world and the resistances associated with them. And we're told then that we should estimate the, the ratio of the risk to a person um, exposed to the 24 volt source compared to the 110 volt source. So with voltage and resistance there's an equation we can use to work out current. So I've added that, um, that particular column into the table here. And that equation is V equals IR, which you've probably come across before, but if we were to rearrange it we would get I equals V over R. And so if we worked out the two um, currents then, so for the first one it will be 110 over 3000, um, which is probably best just to approximate, and it'll be around 0.04. So we can draw that in here. And then for the second one, it's going to be 240 over 2200. So we can simplify that to 24 over 220, or 12 over 110. So we can approximate that to 0.12. And then if the risk is directly proportional to the current, then the ratios of the risk is going to be the same as the ratios of the current. So we could just take a ratio of the current then. So it's going to be 0.12 to 0.04, and this is going to correspond to a 3 to 1 risk. And so that gives us an answer for number 21 um, of 3 to 1, or answer C in this case. Okay, so next we've got questions 22 to 24, which is a bit of a complicated chemistry question about the retrocyclization of cyclobutenes. Um, and I've drawn out all the information they've given us here, but I want to just draw some attention to some of the things that they've said to explain what these energy values mean. So we're told that the carbon for which the magnitude of the sum of the difference of these values is higher rotates in its preferred direction. So the way I think of that is the higher the number, the more likely it is to um, rotate in this particular direction. And how do you tell what direction it wants to turn? Well, if it's positive, it wants to turn in, and if it's negative, it wants to turn out. And we're told also to just assume that only the dominant product is formed. Great, so question 22 then. That's going to talk about this particular molecule here, and um, we've got some arrangement of these groups here. And we're asked how the chlorine atom will react to this. So I think um, the best thing to do is just look at the energies. So for the hydrogen, obviously, they're going to have a difference in energy of zero, which means they don't want to rotate in or out. It doesn't matter. Um, chlorine then has positive 10, and this cyanide group has negative 2. So if it's positive, it means it's always going to want to rotate in. And because nothing else has a more positive or greater positive value here, it'll always rotate in. So the answer for number 22 is going to be A. Number 23 is where it gets a little bit more complicated here. So we've got um, this molecule and we're told that if there's photochemical um, promoted retrocyclization of the butene uh, that I've drawn out here, what would the product be. So I've drawn out the, the molecule here and what out and in mean uh, in this case. And I'll just get rid of this. And I've also given the energy values, just in case you didn't have the table beside you. Um, okay, so let's, I, instead of going through the different options I've drawn out here, I think it's easier just to come up with what we're going to have. So this is going to be the out position and these are going to be the in positions. So let's look at whether or not the groups are happy in their current positions or if they'd rather swap, if their energy allows them to swap. So the let's compare these two first. We'll start here. The chlorine is in its in position and the CF3 group is in its out position. Um, but because the chlorine is more positive than the CF3, we know that it's going to end up um, out. So because this is this value is higher than this value, this is going to be out and this is going to be in. So if we were to draw that onto our diagram, we'd get our F3C group here and our chlorine group here. So if we finish drawing the other side then, 
got double bond here. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the hydrogen and the chlorine here. So the chlorine has a more positive value than hydrogen, and so it will be in, so the chlorine will be in its in position here, and that leaves the hydrogen in its out position. And this corresponds to answer C. So the answer for number 23 is gonna be C. Now, if we look at 24, um, I've drawn out all the different energies again here, just to save going and looking at them. And we're told for the following structure, consider the set of molecules where the R group is going to be um, a number of other, a number of these groups here. It says, for how many of these molecules does the photochemically promoted reaction result in the R group rotating in? So if the R group is more positive than the cyanide group, um, which is, which I haven't drawn in, cyanide group here, which has an energy of minus two, then it will rotate in. So how many of this group have an energy greater than minus two? So it's going to be these three. And so the answer is going to be three. So the answer for 24 is C. So that's a pretty complicated chemistry question, but I think it's easier just to sort of draw it out yourself um, than following the answers. So that was questions 21 to 24. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.